Welcome to the First Player Token Podcast, a short podcast for people who enjoy playing board games with family and friends. I'm your host, Derek Bruff. If you'd like to try a few new board games, but don't know where to start, this podcast is for you. I played a lot of classic board games growing up. Monopoly, Sorry, Clue. But when I found the game Settlers of Catan in college, I realized how much fun more modern board games could be. I've been hosting game nights and growing my board game collection ever since. As soon as my kids were old enough, I started playing board games with them, too. Tabletop games were a great way to spend quality time with kids, away from the temptation of screens, and they've led to so many great memories for me and my family. A few years ago, friends started asking me for family game recommendations, usually just before Christmas. After responding a few times on Facebook, I started blogging about board games that my family had found a lot of fun. Then, during the COVID-19 pandemic, with so many people staying home with their kids, I thought it was time to start a podcast and share my board game recommendations with a new audience. In each episode of the First Player Token podcast, more on that name in a minute, I review and recommend a game that's been a hit with my family or friends. I'll share a little bit about how the game plays, why it's fun, and why you might want to try it. Most episodes focus on a game that's kid-friendly, since those are the games I play the most with my family. In those episodes, I'll mention what ages are good with the game, what kids might learn from the game, and what to watch out for when playing the game with kids. Occasionally, I'll recommend a game that's more for adults. Episodes 7 and 8, for instance, recommend a couple of games that are great for couples. All of the games I recommend are ones I've played a lot, at least 10 times each. There's this handy app called Board Game Stats I use to track all of my plays. I don't feature any games on the podcast that I wouldn't recommend. This really is a recommendation podcast more than a review podcast. But I do share if there are elements of a game that some might find frustrating. Most episodes of the First Player Token podcast include a special guest or two. Sometimes that guest is my delightful wife, Emily, who provides color commentary on games. Several of the cards have a split complementary color scheme, which is one of my favorites. It's one of my favorite color schemes. But each card doesn't use that. Some of them use analogous color schemes, (laughs) which are fantastic. What are analogous? And it really makes you feel... Like, if you just focus on that one piece for a minute, it makes you feel like you could be there. Every time we play the game, it's almost like we're planning our next vacation with every card that comes there, out. The cards have a little bit of black for shading, but then also each of the cards have one other color just for some lines and little detail marks. And so, mm. it, But it's only colors that are already used in the game. These colors remind me of the colors of the lights that would be on the inside of a space shuttle. Emily is a painter and art teacher, among many other awesome things, and she has lots to say about the art and design in the games that we play. Often, my special guest is a junior correspondent, either one of my kids or a niece or a nephew who has their own take on the featured game. I like to mix it up. I mostly... um, tell the truth, but sometimes it's fun to sneak stuff in. Um, so you get all these bunch of cards and they do, and they have like different attachments and you can use them to get more um cyber balls. It's really fun because like it has such a cute face and um, and you, like I won one round because of it. Because I got six points and then a lot of other points from another card, so I really like... um, This game makes me really, really hungry. (laughs) Oh, does it? For uh, ice cream. Yeah, yeah, because like the whole game you're just like looking at ice cream. Yeah. And you just want some ice cream. Yeah. Once um, I never got out of the room and then one of the security guards got me. (laughs) Before I even got out of that room. It was so sad. My interviews with kids are never scripted, as you can imagine. The rest of my episodes, however, are scripted, since I want to respect the listener's time. Most episodes are short, around 10 minutes, and I'm also pretty careful about avoiding any board game jargon or insider lingo. I don't want to confuse any listener new to the hobby. 
There is one term I need to explain, however, and that's first player token. A lot of modern board games have some kind of component, a token, that is kept by whichever player goes first. Often these are games where something will trigger the end of the game, and unlike classic games like Monopoly or Sorry, the game doesn't end right away, it ends after everyone has had an equal number of turns. The first player token helps you remember who started the game, so you'll know who needs to go last. I like the title first player token because it reminds me that I'm trying to connect with listeners who are going to play a particular board game, maybe for the first time. I love introducing people to new games, and I hope you try out a few new games thanks to this podcast. If you do, I'd love to hear from you, either on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. See the show notes for links to my socials. And if you've enjoyed the podcast, please share an episode or two with a friend who might want to try a new board game. That's it for this introduction to the First Player Token Podcast. Look for lots more episodes wherever you found this one. I've been your host, Derek Bruff. Now it's time to play some games.